Today we're going to be making breakaway molds. Molds have been used since ancient times, but are most commonly used within industry. The breakaway mold specifically is intended to be used maybe 20 to 30 times, while a normal mold would be used upwards of 100 times to make an object. Breakaway molds are a good introduction into the mold making process. They're distinctive because we will cast the mold out of plaster in one solid piece, and then we'll partially saw through it, break it in half, and then we can use that breaking line as the registration piece that will hold the mold together. We will start by building our prototype out of solid clay. This can either be hand formed or it can be thrown on the wheel, which is what specifically we're going to be doing today. The prototype should be made upside down on a non-porous surface. So I chose to make a breakaway mold today because I wanted to be able to cast a more complex form than what I would typically be able to do with a single part mold. With a breakaway mold, we'll be able to make a two part mold, which enables me to make these more complex forms. Once we've finished with our prototype, we'll prepare for the mold making process. We'll take metal flashing or metal walls and those will ultimately be the thing that contains the plaster as we pour it. We will make a ring out of this metal flashing, secure it with duct tape, and then place it around the form. We want the distance between the prototype to the metal walls to be at least an inch, although two inches is a bit more ideal because it gives you more room to work. Once we have our metal walls in place, we're then going to take a small coil and put it on the inside of the mold up against the metal containment walls. Then we will take larger coils and enforce the containment walls from the outside of the form. Once we have the walls in place, we need to take detailed measurements of how far the prototype is from the metal containment walls at various heights. This is incredibly important because we will utilize these measurements as a guide when we are sawing into the plaster before we break it in half. If we saw too far, we will saw into the prototype and the mold will be useless. With those measurements, we'll use a, a calculation to figure out the volume of plaster needed for this particular mold. Once we have this volume, we'll use a reference chart to figure out the weight of plaster to the volume of water needed to be mixed together to give us our plaster. Once we have our dry plaster in our water, we will sift the dry plaster into the water before mixing, we should let the plaster hydrate for about three minutes. After that three minutes, we wanna go ahead and start mixing the plaster. We'll use our hands to do this. We wanna homogenize the plaster and water together, but don't stir too aggressively as we don't wanna introduce air bubbles into the plaster. Let the plaster sit for another two to three minutes before pouring. The plaster should be about the consistency of a heavy whipping cream. Using your hand, guide the plaster down the metal walls. We want to fill the mold until it's about two inches above our prototype. We use our hand to guide the plaster down the metal walls so that we don't introduce air bubbles into the plaster while pouring it. We don't want air bubbles to form because ultimately they can end up on the surface of the plaster cast, which will give us an unclean cast. Once filled, gently agitate the table to remove any potential air bubbles that have formed. The air bubbles will rise to the surface so they will no longer be an issue. Once the plaster has set up for about 10 to 20 minutes, at that point we can remove the metal containment walls and clean up the edges with a sure form. A sure form is essentially a cheese grater with a handle on it that will trim away the plaster. We're concerned about rough edges on the mold because we don't want the plaster to chip and for those chipped parts to somehow end up into our clay. Using the dividing disc, we will create registration marks on the outside of the mold that will serve as a guide for when we saw into the mold. This plaster only takes about 10 to 20 minutes to set. Uh, once it has set, we're ready to move into the next step. Once we have our guidelines, carefully saw into the three sides of the mold. We want to saw about two thirds of the way through the plaster walls while making sure not to hit the prototype. So refer back to your earlier measurements. Once the mold has been sawed, we will use a metal hammer and a wooden wedge to break the mold apart. We'll take the wooden wedge, place it in the seams, and carefully hammer it into the form. Once cracked, carefully remove the clay prototype. At this point, we'll use a sure form to clean up the sawed edges of the mold, reassemble the mold, 
strap it together and then place it on the drying rack. After two to seven days, the mold should be ready to cast. Dampen the print surface of the mold with water to prepare for casting. Now we are ready to fill the mold with casting slip. Casting slip is a liquid form of clay. The longer the slip remains in the mold, the thicker the cast will be. The plaster will absorb water out of the slip and will build a clay wall up along the inside of the mold. At this point, we will dump the remaining slip out. After 10 to 30 minutes, we're ready to disassemble the mold to reveal our cast. The clay is still soft, so carefully disassemble the mold as to not damage the soft clay surface. Once the cast sits up for some time, clean up the jagged edges with a sponge or a razor. And now it's ready to go into the kiln. During the bisque firing, the clay will be turned in ceramics by removing all the chemical water, leaving us with a porous form that will no longer dissolve in water. Once out of the kiln, it's ready to be glazed. Glazing seals the surface and gives us an opportunity to decorate the surface. Dip the cast into the glaze and make sure to clean up any glaze off the bottom of the piece, otherwise it will fuse to the kiln shelf when fired. Once the piece is glazed, we'll put it into the kiln for a second time. During this firing, the glaze will melt and fuse onto the piece. A glaze firing usually takes about 48 hours from when the piece is loaded to when it is cool enough to come out. Once the kiln cools, we now have a complete piece and a mold that will enable us to make 20 to 50 variations of that same piece. I find this process compelling as it enables me to make multiple iterations of a complex form without having to invest the time in making a more traditional multi-part mold. This is only one type of mold that can be made depending on the types of forms you want to cast. I use this process in my own research due to its versatility and the number of different iterations it can give me on a single piece.